Okay, so now we're going to deal with equations, more equations, except uh, they're going to be more complicated than the previous ones. Okay, so now we're in section 2.2, which is essentially the last section. You can conceptually think it of as it's the last section, but now we're also going to have absolute values. And this is going to cause some headache. So then this is equations and inequalities with absolute value. So let's do something uh, first. So then, let's say that we have this equation. The absolute value of x is equal to 5. <coughs> so this is, in a sense, the simplest it could possibly be. This is the simplest possible equation I could ask for in this section. <coughs> so how many solutions are there to this? Two. There are two solutions. What two solutions? negative 5 and positive 5. Two solutions. x is negative 5. x is positive 5. So you, so you can already see with the opening example, even with the easiest possible question, right, it's different than the last section. Because I told you in the last section, that every one of those equations, is the solutions are going to fall into one of the following categories. There is either exactly zero solutions, exactly one solution, or infinitely many solutions. Those are the only possibilities. And now the very first one, the simplest possible example, has two solutions, right? which doesn't fit in the zero, one, infinity model that we were using last time. Now there's two. Okay, so you can see this is different than previous. Okay, <coughs> so generally speaking, this is the result. As we're going to repeatedly use this. Okay, the equation absolute value of x is equal to a. <coughs> there are three cases. One, if a is negative, then how many solutions are there? Zero solutions, no solutions. So, right, what it, how about, you know, the absolute value of x is equal to negative 7. Is there any x that satisfies that? No. And that's okay. It's okay for an equation to have no solutions. It's perfectly acceptable. Okay, so then, <coughs> if a is exactly zero, then what is the solution, then how many solutions are there's just one. There's one solution, and what is it? It's zero, right? The only the only number whose absolute value is zero is zero. That's the only number. Okay, and then three. If a is positive, then what about the solution? Two, right? There's x is negative a. That's possible, and x is just a. Okay, so this, right, this is what happened in the previous, in the opening example. Right, we said that x could be negative 5, or x could be 5. <coughs> okay? So now, this last one that I just starred, right, that generally the way most of the questions you're going to receive from this section will proceed. So for example, for example, we could do this one. The absolute value of 4x minus 7 is equal to 5. <coughs> is equal to 5. Well, then there are two possibilities. Okay? 
two possibilities. The first possibility is that 4x minus 7 is equal to negative 5. And it may be that 4x minus 7 is negative 5. It, the second possibility is that 4x minus 7 may be equal to what? Positive 5. Right? So then what this is telling you is that in this section, right, we want to solve for x. So then we have to get x outside of the absolute value. Right? So when I, when in the opening of the question, x is inside of the absolute value, we, we need to get it outside. So we need to remove the absolute value. And then you know, the consequence of moving the absolute <coughs> removing the absolute value is that now you have to split into two possibilities. The one, the first possibility, and the other possibility. So then now, now these are two equations which we could have solved in the last section. Neither one of them is particularly complicated, and we could have solved both of them in the last section, so let's do it rapidly. All right, so then this will be 4x, and I want to move the, the negative 7 to the right-hand side, so it will be negative 5 plus 7, okay, and then 4x is equal to 2. So then divide both sides by 4 and get x is what? x is 1 half. Okay, so that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Okay, alternatively, alternatively, we could have gone in this other direction and said, well, I'll get 4x is equal to 5 plus 7, like so. 5 plus 7 is 12, so 4x is 12. And divide both sides by 4, and you obtain 3. So my claim to you is that, well, both of these are solutions. Both of these are solutions to the equation. So since this is the first example of an actually interesting one involving absolute value, let's check that. How do we check and make sure that, yes, in fact, both of them are solutions? Now let's plug them back in and, ch and, and check that way. So let's check. <coughs> Okay, so the absolute value of 4 multiplied by 1 half minus 7 is supposed to be equal to 5. Okay, so then that's the same as saying the absolute value, so 4 times 1 half is 2 minus 7 is 5, an absolute value. Okay, so then 2 minus 7, that's negative 5. five and then the absolute value of negative five is five. Okay, good. So then that solution works. That solution works. So let's check the other solution. So we should get four multiplied by three minus seven. Should be e an absolute value should be equal to five. Okay, so four multiplied by three, well that's twelve minus seven. 12 minus 7, that's 5. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. And what's the absolute value of 5? 5, so 5 is 5. Okay, so in fact, both of these were solutions. <coughs> okay, so any question about this? <coughs> any question about it? Okay, good. So let's do some more. something's just slightly more interesting. The absolute value of 2x minus 8 and then plus 4 is equal to 10. Okay, I want you to solve for x. How many solutions are you expecting? Two. Good. <coughs>
So now, the purpose of this example is to get you to make an error here if you're going to make it, because I want to keep you from making this error when you actually when it counts. Okay. So then, what must you do first? Right. You need to get the absolute value by itself. Absolute value must be by itself. Okay. So then, <coughs> to do that. 2x minus 8, and then subtract 4 from both sides, and you get 6. Okay, so then now, now is the place where you split into two possibilities. There are two possibilities. 2x minus 8 is equal to negative 6, or 2x minus 8 is equal to positive 6. So then now you proceed as normally. Okay, so then 2x, and then I'll add 8 to both sides, is 2. So x is 1. That's a possibility. Okay, so then alternatively, 2x is 6 plus 8, which is 14, divided by 2 is 7. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> so the place where you split into two possibilities is when you have the absolute value of something is equal to something else. Okay, you don't split before you get to that position. Okay. So any question about this? <coughs> okay. So now we need to get a little bit into the geometry, not really geometry, but sort of the picture of what's happening. So let's consider. Let A be something positive. Okay, A is going to be something positive, some positive number. And let's consider the equation, the absolute value of x is A. Okay, so then we've already said that there are two solutions to this equation. What, what are they? Right, x is negative a, or x is the positive version of a. Okay, so then geometrically, right, the picture of what this is saying is the following. Is that if you put x is 0 here, then here is x is a, and here is x is negative a. So the fact that there are two solutions, the fact that there are two solutions, is because there are two places on the number line where the distance, right, if you were to measure it with a ruler, right, the distance from 0 is a. Right, this has, the distance is A, and this distance is A. Okay, the distance between X and 0 is A. So now, let's consider what might this mean. So, let's consider the absolute value of X and now we're not going to use an equation. We're going to use an inequality. The absolute value of x is less than a. Okay, so then now let's keep using the word distance because it's helpful as a, because it helps you put it into human terms. Right, the equation, the absolute value of x is a, what that's saying, that's saying the distance from 0 to x is a. Right, how many points are there where the distance is exactly a? There's two of them. There's one on the right-hand side, and there's one on the left. Now look at the inequality. The inequality, the inequality is saying that the distance from 0 to x is less than a. Right, it's, it's, it's now there's lots of possible points. Okay, so then now let's draw the number line again. Draw the number line again. <coughs> and 
tell me about the solutions to the inequality. So how about this? Let me ask about this point right here. That's a point on the number line, and it's legitimate for me to ask, does this point that I'm drawing, that I arrowed to, is that a solution to the inequality? Okay, if it's not, then you need to describe to me why it is not. <coughs> because why? Okay, I agree, it would make the equation be false, but put it into some human terms. Be well, because this point, how far is it from zero? Is it further than A or less far than A? It's further than A, right? This, this is saying all points, all points that are, that are A, that are less than A from zero, right? So this point right here that I drew in red, this is a point, it's too far away. It's too far away. So can you see any points that are not too far away? So how about, how about this point? Would this point be a solution to the inequality? Yeah, because the distance from zero to that point that I indicated in green, that's less than A. So besides these points over here where the red arrow is, are there any other points that are not part of the solution? Ah, the left side, right? So then here, right, this is too far. That's too far. Okay, so that's too far. That's too far. Okay, so what is the solution? Ah, but everything between negative A and positive A. That's the solution. Anything in there will be okay. So this one is okay. That one is okay, that one is okay, that one is okay. All of these are okay. But if you get to the right of A, that's too far. If you get to the left of negative A, that's too far. Okay, so then. So, <coughs> what this is telling us what this is telling us is that to remove the absolute value when you have an equation, right, we said these two things. We said, well, if you have the equation absolute value of x is a, then either x is negative a or x is positive a. That's the possibility. So now when we have this inequality, when we have this inequality, now it means the following. It means that that negative a is less than x is less than a. That's what it means. Right? It's the set of all things between negative a and positive a. Okay, so any question about, about this one? So now, there's another one. One other possibility. And it's the opposite case, right? So what if you have the absolute value of x is greater than a? The absolute value of x is greater than a. So let's draw the number line again. Let's again try and describe this in human terms, in humanistic terms, in terms of distance. So now the inequality is saying, now the inequality is saying, the absolute value of x has to be greater than a, meaning the distance from 0 to the x value has to be greater than A. Has to be greater. Okay, so then how about how about this point here? Is the distance to zero, is that greater than A? No, right? So this point, no good. How about maybe on the other side, like that? No, 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 that's no good. Okay, so then where is a point that is in the solution? 
after a, right? Meaning that you know this point right here is that further than a? Yeah, it is. So that one's good. Okay. How about you know this one? Yeah, that one's good. Okay. Anything going that way? Any of those will be good. Okay. Is that all of the solutions? Ah, and we also have the other side, right? The other side. I can be on this side. Right. That's okay because that's further than a to zero. Right. The distance is further than a. Okay. So these are all. These are okay. These are okay. These are okay. Ah, interesting. Okay, so then that's sort of the picture, right? That's the picture. So algebraically, <laughs> right, if I want to remove the absolute value, if I want to remove the absolute value, then I get these two pieces, right? The, the left piece and the right piece. So please describe for me an inequality which says the left piece. So describe it in words. The left piece is to the left of negative a. So I'll write it like this. x is less than negative a. Right? <laughs> the things that are to the left of negative a. Right? The things that are to the left of negative a. But what else is also OK? The things that are to the right of positive a, those are OK as well. OK, so then there are two new things, right? The new things that we, that we learned <laughs> in this remark are this, this thing. We learned this algebraic thing. And we learned this algebraic thing. So any questions about these? Okay, so now let's use these facts. <coughs> okay, for example, <laughs> bless you. 5x minus 3 is less than 8. Okay, I want you to solve. Minus three is less than eight. Okay, so since this this is the first one of this type, I will do it. <coughs> okay, so then the absolute value of five x minus three less than eight. Just copying the problem. So x is inside of the absolute value. I need to get it outside. Okay, which means I need to dispense with the absolute value. In order to do that, in order to do that. <coughs> What's going to happen is I can write this as a sequence of more than one inequality. I can say that negative 8, negative 8 is less than 5x minus 3 is less than 8. Kay. So now this is just like a previous thing that we've solved. Kay, so then let's solve this one. So then what can I do first? So there's two things I can do to isolate x. So on the one hand, you can see that, well, eventually I'm going to need to divide by 5. Okay. Dividing by 5 is going to be necessary. Another thing that's apparently necessary is I'm going to need to add 3. So I have two options. Two options. Which option is appropriate? OK, so let me ask. Will it matter? Does it actually matter? Like, will, will it change the result if I do, if I divide first or if I subtract first? Does it change the result? No, it won't change the result. You still get the same answer. But it'll be more complicated. So what should you do first? You should add first, add or subtract first. And so you, whenever you're trying to remember what should you do first, you just think back to your childhood, right? Did you learn to add first? Or did you learn to multiply first? You learned to add first. So you should add first, right? Do addition first. Okay, similarly, when you go on in math, if you go on in math, you'll learn to do, you know, some things that are termed calculus. You'll learn to do mm, operations which are fall under that category of calculus. And then you might think, well, should I do a calculus step first or should I do an algebraic step first? Well, you just think, right? Did I learn algebra first 
What did I learn in calculus today? Right? You learned algebra first, so you should do algebraic steps first. So you should do additions first. So add three to both sides, and uh, to all positions, and get negative five is less than five x is less than 11. Okay, that's the result of adding <coughs> three. So now divide by five, divide, <coughs> divide by five, and get negative one is less than x is less than 11 over five. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so I'm gonna call this part one. Part two, I'm gonna say, give it to me in interval notation. This is really as simple as it can be. Okay, so what is it? Yeah, open. Why open parentheses? Why why uh, round parentheses? Because it's not included, right? Negative one and then eleven over five. Okay, now part three. I want you to uh, graph on the number line. Graph the solution. So then, the left endpoint is uh, negative one. So should it be? Should it be? It's an open circle. Good. Open. Okay. What about the right endpoint? Open. Okay. So this is x is negative one. This is x is. 11 over 5, and the way you indicate the rest is you, you oh, not that. Good. And all of this. Okay, so any question about this example? So it's everything between those two endpoints, not including the two endpoints. Set of all values which satisfy this inequality. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, <coughs> so then the absolute value, <coughs> the absolute value. two-thirds x plus one is greater than or equal to five. <coughs> hmm. So now, I want you to conceptualize this, right? Try and think about this, not just purely from a mechanical, computational point of view. Look at what it says. Right? Humanly, you should be thinking that absolute value is denoting distance. <coughs> Somehow, it's denoting a distance. So what is that saying? That's saying somehow that the distance of something, some distance, is greater than five. Right? Whereas in the previous question, the previous question was saying something that might be, that might sound like the distance is less than eight. The distance is less than eight. So the distance is less than eight resulted in something that looks like an interval, the thing between two, a, a, a set between two points, right? The distance is less than eight. So then how will this one appear? The distance is greater than five. How will this one appear? Will it be everything between two points? No, it won't be it won't be everything between two points, right? We're saying the distance is greater than five. It'll be what? 
everything outside of two points. Everything outside of two points, right? That's like saying that, well, you know, I can consider, you know, myself. I want to consider the set of all people that are within 50 feet of me. Well, you know, there's y'all and maybe a few others, you know, up there, down there, wherever. That's like maybe, you know, at most 30 people. There's maybe a, there's maybe 30 people that are within 50 feet of me. Their distance to me is just is is less than 50. So now let's consider the set of all people whose distance is greater than 50 feet from me. Uh, well, that's a lot of people, right? That's basically almost everyone on the planet, right? Okay. <coughs> so does everybody see that this is conceptually a little different than the previous question? Okay, good. So then now let's solve this. Okay, so then we want to remove the absolute value. We want to remove the absolute value. So then the removal of the absolute value in this case, okay, is going to result in two possibilities, right? The, the stuff that's to the left and the stuff that's to the right. Okay, so then I'm going to say two thirds, two thirds, x plus one, and then something, and then also over here, two thirds x plus 1 something. So what do I have to do here? 2 thirds x plus 1. Okay, so you got to speak clearly. So what? Sorry? Okay, greater than or equal to what? 5. Greater than or equal to 5. Right? This is the stuff. This is the stuff that's on the right. That's the stuff that is on the right. So then now this one, this one over here, I need to write, I need to, I don't want to say right, I, wanna, I need to pin what? Less than or equal to what? Negative five, right? This is the stuff, this is the stuff that's on the left. So now, <coughs> now we proceed with each one of these inequalities in the same way that we have did previously. Okay, so then I can see that I'm going to need to add and multiply eventually. Okay, so which one do I fir do first? And I'll, I'll do the addition or subtraction or whatever first. So two thirds, and then I'll subtract one, so less than or equal to uh, negative six because negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Uh, I need an x there. <coughs> okay, so then now I'll do what? Multiply by the reciprocal, right? So then I'll get x is less than or equal to negative 6 times 3 halves. Okay, times 3 halves. So negative 6 times 3 halves, <coughs> well, that's uh, negative 9. So x is less than or equal to negative 9. Fantastic. Okay, so then now as for the right. Okay, so then you get two thirds x and subtract one greater than or equal to four. <coughs> okay, so then now I will uh, multiply by the reciprocal again. X is greater than or equal to uh, four times three halves. Four times three halves is six. Okay, so it can either be the solutions are all of these things, right? It can be the stuff that's in the left, or it can be the stuff that's in the right. So now, <coughs> I'll say that that was part one. Now part two, I want you to write in, interval, in interval notation. So what is the interval notation for the left part? So, it's an interesting question. I'll start out with the right-hand side. So, so negative nine, and then do I include do I include negative nine or not? Yes. Okay, so I include negative nine. Now, how far does the interval go to the left? 
down all the way, right? So then negative infinity, and do I include negative infinity or not? No, right? Negative infinity is not a number. So it can never be included. Okay, so or, how do you denote this one? Right, square parentheses, 6, and then to infinity. Mm -hmm, like so. Okay, and then 3. <coughs> 3. We could write this, uh, you know, as a graph. Okay, so I want you to graph this on the number line. So there'll be points, right? There'll be x is negative 9, and there'll also be this point, x is 6. Okay, so shall they be included or not? Included. included, and how does that, how is that denoted on the graph? With solid, with solid points, right? We're including. Okay, so the previous question the previous question would have been everything between negative 9 and 6. That would have been the previous one. This one's different. This is everything outside of negative 9 and 6. Okay, so it has this appearance. Right, so everything to the right. Okay, and everything to the left. <coughs> Any question about this example? <coughs> everything to the right, everything to the left. Okay, so any question about these things before we do something even more different? Even more different. So absolute value is just like just like the previous thing, okay, except that it sort of has this splitting. When you deal with inequalities now, you're, you're going to get things that look like everything between two endpoints or everything outside of two endpoints. Okay, so everything between two points or everything outside of two points. So any questions about these? <coughs> okay. So now we need to do the most fun thing not really that fun. Okay, so then we're in section 2.3. And it is called quadratic equations. Quadratic equations. Okay, so then we need two remarks before we can actually get to the main result. The first remark is this, is that if a multiplied by b is 0, so let's say we have two expressions, a and another one b, and their product is 0, then what must be true? Then one of them has to be 0. They could both be 0. It could be just A is 0 and B isn't. It could be just B is 0 and A isn't. But it is a fact that one of them has to be 0. Then A is 0 or B is 0. So an example of this is something like this, right? We've been using this before. So X, mi uh, x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 5 is equal to 0. So we have the product of two things is 0. So since their product is 0, <coughs> it must be true that one of those terms was 0. So either x plus 3 is 0 or X, min uh, x minus 5 is 0. Right, it, 
and then now these are pretty easy equations to solve, right? X is negative 3, or X is 5. Right? So this is something that we've really already been using. Yeah, but now I'm formally telling it to you. If you have the product of things is 0, then one of those things had to have been 0. Okay, similarly, <coughs> another remark. If you have x squared is equal to a, x squared is equal to a, <coughs> so if this is the case, then there are two solutions to this. x is negative the square root of a, or x is positive the square root of a. Okay, so why is this the case? Well, let's do it. Let's do it, and let's show you the thing that wasn't shown you in high school. <laughs> okay, so then if you have x squared is a, then how do you go about solving this equation? What, what must you do? Sorry? Okay, so like, you know, on the previous equations, it was, oh, we need to add something to both sides or subtract, or we need to divide. What is it that we need to do to both sides of the equation? Ah, we need to compute square roots of both sides. Okay, so then we have the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of a. And now I have a question for you. What is the square root of x squared? No. Square root of x squared is not x. It's the absolute value of x. What's the absolute value of x? The absolute value of x is the square root of a. Right? This is the part that somehow I, I, I guess it's omitted in, in secondary school. Right? The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. And then according to the previous section now, I have an absolute value equation, so it splits into two possibilities. Right, the two possibilities are x is negative the square root of a, or x is positive the square root of a, which is exactly what we said. <coughs> okay, so I don't I don't care if you just if you just remember the result. That's, that's a fine thing to just remember the result, but you need to know why. Okay, the reason why it occurs this way is because the intermediate algebraic step, there's an intermediate algebraic step where you have absolute value occurring. That's where it's occurring. Okay, it has nothing to do with, you know, the, the, the confusion that I'm, you know, fighting against is that the square root of 9 is 3. There is no other square root of 9. There isn't. Okay, because the square root function, okay, we'll learn what function means. The square root function, right, when you compute a square root, the things that come outside of it have to be positive. Nothing, nothing comes out negative outside of the square root, right? You have a broken square root if, if negative things are coming outside of it. Okay, good. So, that being the case now, <coughs> that being the case. <coughs> x minus 2 squared is equal to 6. x minus 2 squared is equal to 6. Okay, so how do we go about solving this? It's already factored. Okay, so you're saying multiply it out. Maybe that's what you meant. 
okay? So let me write that down. If you were to do that, if you were to do that, then you would have x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 6. So now you have, you know, in the first, in the way I gave the question, how many times is x written? Once. That's good. If you multiply it out, how many times is x written? Twice. That's bad. <laughs> we don't want that. Sorry? Get rid of the square. Okay. Okay, how do we do that? Do what? Square root. Okay, good. This is what I was fishing for. The square root of x minus 2 squared is equal to the square root of 6. So, now, what is the next step? The absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to the square root of 6. The absolute value. So now, now we're in a position that we were in in the last section. Right now, it splits into two possibilities. It may be that x minus 2 is equal to negative square root 6. That's possible. And another possibility is that x uh, minus 2 is equal to positive the square root of 6. In either case, there are two equations. We can solve either one of them readily. So it's either 2 minus the square root of 6 or, or x is 2 plus the square root of 6. Okay. And for those of you, I can feel the tension in the air. Yes, you can write it like this if you wish. Okay, but I typically won't. <coughs> I find that that adds to student confusion more than it does to student understanding. Okay, so these are the solutions. One solution. Really? Come on, computer. What has happened here? So there's one solution, two solutions. Okay, so any question about this example? <coughs> okay, so now we're going to do something that is <coughs> that is going to feel weird. Unless you've seen it before. Okay. So we're going to do, we're going to solve the following uh, example. Okay, so x squared, x squared minus 4x uh, plus 2 is equal to 3. We're going to solve this, <coughs> solve this problem. So first, first thing is that I could say, well, this is the same as x squared minus 4x, and then I could subtract 3 from both sides. Subtract 3 from both sides and say minus 1 is equal to 0. So if we were in a previous section, if we were in a previous section, then we could say, oh, well, I'll try and factor it. Okay. So then <coughs> there's not enough time for me to demonstrate it to you, but this this is not going to factor in a nice way. Right? You're not going to be able to find two integers. You're not going to be able to find two integers such that you can say it's x minus a multiplied by x minus b. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. But that doesn't mean that there's no solution. That just means that you can't find the solution in that way. So now I'm going to do a, the, a following very strange sequence of operations. Okay? <coughs> so then I'm going to say that this is x squared minus 4x 
uh, and I'm going to say plus 0 minus 1 is equal to 0. So all I did was I added 0. I added 0. That's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. So now I'm going to say minus 4x, minus 4x, and then I'm going to turn that 0 into 4 minus 4, because 4 minus 4, that's 0. So that was fine. I could do that. OK. <coughs> so then x squared minus 4x plus 4, and then minus 4 minus 5. So minus 5 is equal to 0. OK, so then now I'm going to, so for now, these are just mysterious. Why, why is he up here doing this? I don't know. So somehow I did these operations. And I got to here, and I'm claiming to you that this is a pretty good place to be right, in this position. Okay, so the reason why is because consider the left hand side. The left hand side can be factored. How can the left hand side be factored now? X minus 2 squared. It can be written as X minus 2 squared. OK, so then now I can do, this problem is now just like the previous problem. It's just like the previous problem. So I can say that this is now, I can say the square root of x minus 2 squared should be equal to the square root of 5. The square root of something squared is its absolute value. So absolute value of x minus 2 is square root 5. So there are two possibilities. x minus 2 is negative square root 5 or x minus 2 is positive square root 5. So x is 2 minus square root 5. Or x is, uh, that should be a square root. x is 2 plus square root 5. So the mystery, right, the magic, the magic occurred right here. How did I know to do this? That's where the, the magic and mystery occurred, is, is how did I know that that's what I wanted to do? Okay, so then this operation that I have just done, this is called something, uh, it's called completing the square. Completing the square. <coughs> okay, so this is... So now we're going to see <coughs> how <coughs> I went about doing this. <coughs> okay. So for example, let's choose a better one. Okay, good. So for example, solve by Completing the square. <coughs> so the question is 3x squared minus 6x plus 5 is equal to 0. Solve by completing the square. <coughs> okay, so as soon as we finish this example, we are going to have a quiz. Okay? That's my alarm. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be up here just blah, 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 just, and I'd miss it. Okay, so the first thing, the first thing that you do <coughs> is 3x squared. three x squared minus six x is equal to negative five. So the first step that you do is you isolate the x's. Or whatever the variable happens to be, right? I could give you an equation that has y as the variable or you know b is the variable or whatever. So we isolate the x's. <coughs> OK, 
Okay, the next thing that you do, the next thing that you do is you write this, 3 multiplied by x squared minus 2x <coughs> is equal to negative 5. So <coughs> this step, this step is that you make the coefficient on the x squared term uh, <coughs> equal to 1. So in the previous line, in this line that I'm indicating, right, can you see that little point floating around? In that line, what was the coefficient of the x squared term? 3, right? But inside of the square parentheses, what is the coefficient of the x squared term? It's one, right? That's what I want. That's what I wanted to accomplish. Okay. So then now, <coughs> inside of the square parentheses, we're going to add zero. So minus two x, and so I'm going to I'm going to write plus zero, and this is purely for your entertainment. So then, how am I going to get the zero that goes in there? So the way it's going to be is I'm going to add something and subtract that same something. Okay, so if I'm going to add 10, I'm going to subtract 10. If I'm going to add 7, I'm going to subtract 7. So what you do is you add plus negative 2 over 1, uh, excuse me, negative 2 over 2 squared minus negative 2 over 2 squared. So where did that negative 2 come from? Ah, from this, right? This negative 2. Right, so it's add half of the coefficient of the x term squared and subtract. Okay, so then now we'll <coughs> we'll do this, right? So three x squared minus two x. So negative two over two, that is negative one. And then squared is positive 1, right? So then plus 1, minus 1, right? So in the end, what did I do? I still added 0, but what I did is I added 1, and then I subtracted 1. <coughs> OK. So now <coughs> I'm going to start to isolate things. So I'm going to divide by 3 x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 1 is equal to negative 5 over 3. And now look at this, this term that I'm underlining in green. The term that I'm underlining in green can be written as a square. What, how can it be written as a square? It's x minus 1 all squared. x minus 1 squared minus 1 is equal to negative 5 thirds. So now you want to solve for that square. So the square can be solved for as follows. x minus 1 squared is equal to, I'll move the 1 to the right hand side, 1 minus 5 thirds. <coughs> this seems like a strange question. <coughs> But that's okay. I wouldn't have, if I had known this was going to happen, I wouldn't have chosen this question. But it's okay. So then, what's going to happen now? <coughs> so x minus 1 squared is equal to, is equal to, what's 1 minus 5 thirds? Negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds. <coughs> okay. So now, <coughs> now what? I 
don't know about that. I don't know about that. So remember the caveat that I said about section 1.6, complex numbers. If I don't say that we're using complex numbers, then they don't exist. So tell me about the solutions to this equation. There aren't any solutions. Is it okay for an equation not to have solutions? Sure. It's perfectly legitimate for an equation not to have a solution. And if they don't have solutions, then I want you to be able to say, ah, here we are at this position, and now I can detect that there are no solutions. Okay, there are no solutions. No solutions, because cannot take square root of negative numbers. <coughs> okay, but what if it had been what if it had been positive? Then you would have taken a square root and then you would have gotten absolute value and then there would have been two possibilities, etc, etc, etc. Okay. <coughs> so any questions before we have the quiz? Okay, please put away all of your notes calculators and all of that kind of thing. <coughs>